Good morning and Happy New Year. Pastor John here from New Life Church in Owaco, Washington, and this is the message for January 2nd, 2022, and we are so glad that you have decided to join us today. This morning, uh, the message that I have for you is one that I hope brings you tremendous hope going into the new year. I had the opportunity this past week to go see my family in South Alabama. Now, I know that not many of you were aware, and that's always intentional when I travel for obvious reasons. I don't like everybody to know my business, but I think that it was uh, fairly transparent, and we were able to uh, be gone, but also to get back in time for the service today. But as I was traveling, as I was gone to Alabama, uh, I was reminded that there are some, some stark differences uh, in the culture and in the environment. For starters, it was almost 80 degrees every uh, day that we were there. And by contrast, here on the peninsula, the, those of you who were here, you know that last week we had ice and snow. Uh, so it was very different as far as the weather. But beyond the weather and even beyond the culture, uh, something else that really stuck out uh, to me is that there are very different uh, evils and principalities and powers in these regions that are very, very different. Now, obviously, I am referring to Paul's warning in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12, when he says, For we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in this dark world, and against evil spirits in the heavenly places. Now, darkness exists all around us. And hear me, you had better be ready for the imminent return of Christ. Because when I look at the world, whether it's here in the Pacific Northwest or in the, I mean, on the buckle of the Bible Belt in Ozark, Alabama, or even when I'm watching the news, just watching the current events that are happening around the world, I see one very consistent theme. You should know this, Timothy, that in the last days, there will be very difficult times, for people will love only themselves and their money. They will be boastful and proud, scoffing at God disobedient to their parents and ungrateful. They will consider nothing sacred. They will be unloving and unforgiving. They will slander others and have no self-control. They will be cruel and hate what is good. They will betray their friends, be reckless, be puffed up with pride, and love pleasure rather than God. And that's, uh, that's from 2 Timothy chapter 3, and that's verses 1 through 4. But when I see this message from 2 Timothy playing out real time on the TV and in our communities, then I'm telling you, friend, you need to be ready for the imminent return of Christ. We talked about that last week. Now, there is tremendous evil that is present in our world. The sanctity of life, it seems to be almost non-existent in places. And people worldwide, worldwide, they can literally be described using this passage of Scripture from 2 Timothy. I mean, they're, they're mean people, and I'm not talking about you specifically, but when we look at people as a whole... There is so much evil that is now prevalent. And it's not just that they sin, but now, as the scripture said, that they'll be puffed up with pride, scoffing at God. They will be boastful and proud. There are people who seem to actually be proud of their sin. Some of them to the point that they actually find their identity not in who God created them to be, but instead, in their sin, they're looking to their sin for their identity. But when I step back 
and I, and I take in that 30,000 foot view, I see evidence of Paul's warnings in Ephesians. There are different evil spirits that are at work in different places. In some parts of the world, the enemy's schemes, I mean, they are loud and they are violent and he is in your face. It's explosive. And in some places, the enemy isn't even trying to hide his actions. He uses tyranny from the government. I mean, there's places around the world where religion and faith in Christ specifically is attacked by those who are in power. And it is just outright evil. And, he, and so the enemy uses governments to force his will on people. But in some places, the enemy is sneaky. He, he, he's subtle. And he hunts, not so much like that roaring lion seeking whom he may devour that's talked about in Scripture, but instead as a wolf in sheep's clothing. He, he goes around still seeking who he can devour. I mean, he still wants to destroy your soul. Don't get me wrong. But in some places, the schemes that he uses are not these uh, in-your-face, explosive, violent things. No, instead, he entices you. He draws you in. He tries to pull you away from the truth, the truth that is Christ. And he uses his army of demonic underlings to impose his will. And unfortunately, people, flesh and blood people, continue to be used and employed by him to accomplish his schemes. And that's actually one of the most damaging things about all of this, is because sometimes it's the people who are around us who are used by the enemy to pull us away from the truth. And it's not just the evil people and the predators. No, sometimes it's people that we would call our friends who've been deceived. They have been drawn away from the truth. And they think that what they're doing is right, but what they're doing is in contrast to Scripture. And it's evil, and it's something that needs to be avoided and, and sometimes we get deceived because we care so much about the individual. And it's not that they're trying to hurt us, but they do because they pull us away from the truth. And sometimes those people really are evil, and there are predators out there, people that would hurt you, and people who despise you and see no value in you because they have been, they have been corrupted and they've been perverted by the enemy. And because of that, because of the uncertainty and because of the darkness and because of the evil, this world, it can be an extremely dark and terrifying place. Now, if you know me, you, I mean, we got a tree right here behind me. If you know me, you know that I don't want you to be so hyper spiritual that you fall into this trap of fear believing that there is a demon behind every bush that wants to jump out and grab you, or around every corner. Yes, we have a very real enemy. Yes, he wants to pull you as far away from Christ, the truth, as he can. And yes, his demons work for him, and they are out doing his will. And yes, they want to destroy your soul. All of that is true. But we should never live our lives in such a way that we believe that those demons are just waiting to grab us because we have a certainty and that's what I want to talk to you about today we have a certainty that mitigates all fear and it's that potential fear that I specifically want to address today that even though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death we don't have to fear evil and there's a very important reason why our world can be dark. It can be absolutely terrifying. And I want to be plain. Evil. Whether it's something that is scary, like violence, or whether it's something that doesn't seem scary at all, because it, it, it seems to entice. And there's so many things that seem to entice, that draw us into sin, but are in fact destructive. And I hate 
when the enemy uses things that should be good, for example, love, and he twists it into something that's used to deceive people because that's not in any way what God planned or created or intended. Now, the darkness around us, it, it can feel like it's surrounding us. It can feel, it can feel oppressive it, 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 to the point that you feel like you are going to be swallowed up just completely engulfed in the darkness. Maybe you feel like you're drowning in, in, that, in that evil. But it's in those times, in those absolute darkest moments, that it is imperative that you know the truth. Perhaps it's fitting that this is the first Sunday of 2022. I already wished you a Happy New Year, but I do again. I wish you a Happy New Year. But on this first Sunday of 2022, I want to read a poem to you. Now, this isn't scripture. This is, this is just a poem, but it's absolutely dripping with the truth of God's Word. It's called God Knows. That's the name of the poem. It's called God Knows. It's by Minnie Louise Haskins. This is the poem that she wrote, and I want you to hear these words. Please, please pay attention. And I said to the man who stood at the gate of the year, Give me a light that I might tread safely into the unknown. And he replied, Go out into the darkness and put your hand in the hand of God. That shall be better than light and safer than a known way. So I went forth. And finding the hand of God, trod, trod gladly into the night. And he led me toward the hills and the breaking of day in the lone east. So heart me still. What need our little life, our human life to know, if God hath comprehension? In all the dizzy strife of things both high and low, God hideth his intention. God knows his will is best. The stretch of our years which wind ahead so dim to our imperfect vision are clear to God. Our fears are premature. In him all time hath full provision. Then rest. Until God moves to lift the veil from our impatient eyes, when as the sweeter features of life's stern face we hail, Fair beyond all surmise, God's thought around his creatures, our minds shall fill. You and I have no choice. We, we have to walk in darkness. That's the world that we live in. It is dark. And all around us, the enemy seeks our destruction. There are so many predators, both the physical ones that I mentioned but also the spiritual ones, those demonic beings who really are out to destroy you. And because of that, all of us have to find our path in the darkness. And it can be an absolutely terrifying place, especially in those moments when it seems like the all light is just lost, it's just gone. When, it's, when it feels like darkness is just closing in around you, and you are going to be lost, that you're going to drown. And if that's the case, and if that's where you find yourself today, then there is still one truth that you desperately need to hear. And I promise you, this is the only truth. It's all you will ever need. Matthew 14, starting in verse 22. It says, immediately after this, Jesus insisted that his disciples get back into the boat and cross to the other side of the lake while he sent the people home. After sending them home, he went up into the hills by himself to pray. Night fell while he was there alone. Meanwhile, the disciples were in trouble, far away from land, for a strong wind had risen, and they were fighting heavy waves. 
about three o'clock in the morning, Jesus came toward them, walking on the water. When the disciples saw him walking on the water, they were terrified. In their fear, they cried out, It's a ghost! But Jesus spoke to them at once. Don't be afraid, he said. Take courage. I am here. Then Peter called to him, Lord, if it's really you, tell me to come to you walking on the water. Yes, come, Jesus said. So Peter went over the side of the boat and walked on the water toward Jesus. Up to this point, you have a story. Jesus is walking on the water. Peter is now walking on the water. But when he, Peter, saw the strong wind and the waves, he was terrified. And he began to sink. I want you to think about Peter's fear in that moment. I know that uh, I have a loved one who is not fond of being out on the ocean. Uh, the thought of the, that deep, dark water is something that terrifies her. And I know that Peter it was a professional fisherman before he was a disciple of Christ. And you wouldn't think that he would have fear, certainly not while he was in the boat. But he also knows what's in this water, and he knows that these storms can be violent, and he has a respect. But in this moment, he also knows he's not in the boat, and he's not with Jesus. He's walking on the water, and it's dark, and there's wind, and there's waves, and it's terrifying. And he began to sink. He began to be swallowed up by the darkness. And in that moment of absolute desperation, possibly believing that it was the last breath that he would ever exhale, Peter sets an example for all of us. And it now stands like a lighthouse rooted to the bottom of the Sea of Galilee and sticking up out of the water, Peter set an example as he cried out, Save me, Lord! That's what he shouted. Brother, hear me. Sister, listen to me. Son, Pay attention. Daughter, eyeballs, hear me. You are walking in darkness. That is true. We have a very real enemy. That is true. There are evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world. A there are mighty powers in the dark world, and there are evil spirits in the heavenly places. There are evil people who are driven by sin, and there are demonic influences in our world. That evil wants to destroy you. And right now, where you find yourself, you might be in the absolute darkest season of your entire life. You might be surrounded by predators. There may be evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world that just feel like they are breathing down your neck. Maybe even you actually see the red or yellow glow of evil spirits' eyes looking at you from just out of your where you can see, you can't make them out clearly, but you know that they're there, and you know that they're real, and you have found yourself in absolute darkness. You might feel like you're drowning. Your fear may be overwhelming you as though your next breath 
will be your last. This is your moment of desperation. This is your Peter walking on the water. He begins to sink storm. But he set an example for you to follow. Because in this moment, you can do exactly what Peter did. When he saw the strong wind in the waves, he was terrified and began to sink. Save me, Lord, he shouted. For it was then that Jesus immediately reached out and grabbed him. That's verse 31. Right now, in your moment of desperation, you can cry out, Save me, Lord. Save me, Lord. And immediately, Jesus reached out and grabbed him. In our darkness, there can be fear, but there need not be. We can walk through the valley of the shadow of death and fear no evil because he's with us. And I said to the man who stood at the gate of the year, Give me a light that I may tread safely into the unknown. And he replied, Go out into the darkness and put your hand into the hand of God. That shall be to you better than light and safer than a known way. Let's close in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, I know your word is true. And I know that when we find ourselves in the dark, that we have only to cry out to you. And your word says that you are right there with us. Father, I ask if there is anyone today who is having to live a life that has just become almost comfortable in fear because they're surrounded by so much evil, that you bring liberty and light to their life. And if not, Lord, if that's not the path, instead I ask that they put their hand in yours and they walk the path ahead of them, knowing that you are drawing them ever closer and closer to the hope and the future that you have for them. Let them not be deceived by the enemy. In fact, I ask that you shine a light on his schemes so that they will see and know what the enemy has planned and be able to avoid those traps, and they will walk ever closer to you. And Lord, if there's someone today who is struggling with fear, then I ask, Holy Spirit, that you bring them a peace that passes understanding so that they can navigate this life, not in fear, but that they can walk boldly as your ambassador, that they can bring the gospel and the light and the truth to others who are floundering in the dark. Because just as the enemy would use people to do evil, I know you use people to accomplish your will. And maybe you're sending us into the darkest places, Lord, to be your hand, to reach out and guide someone else to light and truth. Embolden us, Lord, to be your ambassadors and servants of the kingdom. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. I thank you for joining us today. Look forward to seeing you next week.